Lucy. Oh. Gold. Turn on your red light. Is that how it goes? I don't know. That's perfect. Something like that. Hey everybody, welcome to the Class of Redneck. So tonight we got Uni from Stolpen Vineyards, which is uh, the wine that's supposed to pair with the sea urchin. We don't have any sea urchin though, but we do have the snakehead fish. Uh, apparently also known in Asia as the black fish. The black fish, all right. But uh, yeah, apparently it's an invasive species and uh, supposedly an Asian delicacy, so. Yep. We got yep. a hold of some and uh, if you're so interested, we, there's info on like, you know, uh, just do a quick Google search and find out about the, you know, the invasive species snakehead, how it got here and uh, what, uh, like we may as well eat it because if we don't, it could take over the Great Lakes and that would be bad. Yeah, so you might as well just catch <laughs> as many as you can. That's also, right. it walks on land. Oh yeah, it can Which survive creepy. for four yeah. days on land. Mm -hmm. Which is creepy. Four days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So eat it. Because yeah. that's weird. So uh so we've thrown some on the grill. We had a it was a maple rub, is that what you used on there? Uh yeah, so um yeah, it was a, a maple based uh shout out to Dizzy Pig, uh, uh down in Manassas, Virginia. Uh their Raging River. That's what it was, uh, yeah, Raging River. Yep. yep. Yep, so you know, just a nice like general purpose seafood pork, poultry seasoning, good stuff. Nice. But then uh, marinated for about an hour in uh, homemade Chardonnay. Oh, dad wine. Dad yeah. wine. <laughs> Which we did sample the remainder of the bottle. We did, and it was good. Thanks again, dad. But um, Chardonnay, salt, um, pickled ginger, and garlic. All right, and then we pa get the- Palm heel struck. <laughs> Fresh ginger cloves. Nice. Then we slapped it on the grill, and then we paired it with, uh, we got some hush puppies, we got some fried okra, we got a bacon ranch coleslaw, we got a homemade cocktail sauce, and then and a homemade tartar sauce. Homemade tartar sauce. Mm. So we got all kinds of I can't wait. stuff to tear through. But first, let's check this stuff out. The uni. All right, so we, we kind of cheated and took some, took some sips uh, before we gave it a proper evaluation. So this was 70% Roussan. 70% Roussan. Which yeah, is we, a we variety. Had to, we had to Google how to... <laughs> every time she does it, I'm running in my mouth. Okay. On purpose. 70% Rous, Roussan and 30% uh, Chardonnay. So yeah, the Roussan is one I'm not familiar with. Yeah, so yeah, that'll be interesting. To, new to me as well. Apparently it was the the whitest, decadentest, greatest hedonistic Most grape or something hedonistic according grape. to the googles and then the other 30 percent was chardonnay which so, which will be nice because we marinated this with the with the chardonnay so i think yep. i think we'll get a good pairing from that thing i mean to me it smells a lot like a like a regular chardonnay it, it's it's got a chardonnay nose but yeah. like uh definitely none of the like buttery oakiness right you know definitely stainless steel fermentation type thing yeah. um a little floral I've definitely smelt more floral Chardonnays. Yeah, but there is a hint. There's there's a little bit there. Yeah, yeah. Not that that's a ding or anything. Yeah, you know, it, it smells good. It's it's like a little floral, and then you get like I want to say like citrus and uh, I don't know cherries maybe. I was kind of smelling uh, this maybe the citrus that you're. It almost smells like a like a fresh cut grass kind of smell to me. Oh really? Yeah. I guess I could see that. But I, I could see, good. yeah, seeing that as like a citrus or a lime, but there's kind of like a tone of that, you know, that summer, mm -hmm. you know, I've just cut the grass smell. I don't know. Maybe that's the floral that I'm, maybe I'm mistaken the floral for it. Well, I was going to say my, my second good sniff there after taking a, a break was a little bit more, I think we're just kind of going in opposite directions a little bit. I was getting a little bit more like light woody herbaceousness. I got a little minerality up front, and then um, it's coming across to me like like apricot, like nice, nice ripe apricot. Okay, I was thinking peach. It yeah. finished finished really clean to me though, like like mm -hmm. it was. Yeah, I could taste yeah, the good good acidity, right? I, I think this yeah. is gonna this is gonna work. 
pretty well with the dish. I'm getting a thumbs up over there behind the camera. Does it work well you want with the dish? <laughs> I really like mm. the wine. It's really good. You wanna, oh. Would you like to hear the sensory notes from the winemaker? Let's hear the sensory notes. Let's see how close we got. Sure. Golden pineapple, white flowers, and Asian mm. pear. Ooh, Asian Backed pear. Backed by tangerine citrus. Delightful fuzziness okay. all over. That's a peach. From the nose through the mouth, fresh, crunchy acidity complements the full-bodied richness of the mid palate and provides a titillating cut under the fleshy, cloudy textures. Snakehead, first time. Do you know how they catch snakehead? I think it's bow fishing, right? Bow fishing. So this was this was caught by some local bow fishermen, gifted to me, and I am super glad to be sharing it with you for one of our classy redneck videos. God, the fish is delicious, a great texture. I see why it's a delicacy mm -hmm. overseas. That's really good, right? That that little bit of uh, not a super uh, minerally wine, but just enough. Like that kind of grabs the the salt from the uh, marinade, and then the sweet and the spice are playing with the fruit. I think it's really good. Like the I think the spice, the sweetness and the spice. I think. Matches the acid, not the acidity, the, the citrusiness of it. But then the lightness of the fish, I think, and the acidity of the wine. Like there's, there's like so many different levels that it works. Yeah, is kind of how I feel about it. That definitely like a like a punchy acidity that just grabs right in there. It's good, right? I keep thinking I should like try something else with the wine, but <laughs> my fork keeps digging into the fish. Well, I moved over to the, I was trying it with the cocktail sauce. And the, oh, man. Oh. I think the cocktail sauce overpowers the fish, for one. Mm. So all you're left with is a cocktail sauce flavor. And I don't think that pairs great with the wine. All right, I just tried exactly what you tried. And I don't find it as offensive as you do. Wait. I don't, I don't think it's great. Did you go with tartar sauce? Yeah. Because you don't, yeah, I was doing the cocktail. Oh, you did cocktail sauce? Yeah. Okay, okay. I was gonna try that the tartar sauce. I was I was too busy eating to listen properly. I apologize. Yeah, I feel like the tartar sauce was kind of a halfway mark. Mm. You know, like it kind of like it didn't really overpower the fish, but it I don't feel like it complimented. It kind of overpowered the rum. I feel like. Yeah. Which I think is an important component yeah. of this pairing with the wine. So it's kind of halfway to that. Um. I think just kind of the, the citrus aspect of it was kind of working oddly with the uh, pickles <laughs> in the tart sauce. <laughs> okra to wine works. It's good. But wine to okra? Really? Yeah. Yeah, it's like, you know, okra's got kind of a bitterness to it, right? Um, you don't get a lot of that in fried okra, but you get a little bit. And it's nice. The wine kind of brightens that up a little bit, brings it out a little bit, but not in an offensive way. It's nice. But then when you go from a sip of wine back to the okra, you get like a massive burst of that bitterness. <laughs> I want to see if you get the same thing. I was, the first bite I was focused more on like the, the breading of the okra and how that worked, but yeah, yeah, I think, I think okra to wine is good, but I did notice it. So I'm going to go back for a second to second round. I think the first, the first time I noticed it a lot more than the second. I don't know, mm. I don't know why, but yeah, there was this bitterness to it. The second time wasn't as bad. I don't know if it's just different pieces of okra or what. Uh, moving on, hush puppies, hush puppies. All right. Yeah, I feel like it's not a bad pairing, but I would love to try it with a better quality. Yeah, and not just a frozen. It seems like the hush puppy concept would. Uh, would work well with this, but yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try a bite with some tartar sauce on it. I'm gonna give him a shot with cocktail. The hush puppy with, with co cocktail sauce paired better than the fish with the cocktail sauce. The cocktail sauce really takes away from the wine. Mm -hmm. I actually liked 
going from the wine to the cocktail sauce with a puppy. Okay. Better than cocktail sauce. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Sure. Like, I don't know, it seemed like this almost like cleansed my palate. And then when I took that next bite of Hush Puppy and cocktail sauce, it was like very fresh. Mm. Very like okay. renewed almost, you know. Right on, right on. It was wild. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it's you know, it's definitely definitely got some citrusy acidity to it, so. Alright. Mm. Now we're on to the coleslaw. Coleslaw is the last thing we got to try. I feel like bacon ranch should pair with anything but the fall. I feel like there are a lot of good things I could say about how this coleslaw pairs with this wine, but I'm just gonna go with the one, like, big one. Somehow, this coleslaw is so good that, like, the last, it, you, you put a fork full in your mouth, you chew it all up, and when you think it's gone, you've still got a couple little hunks of bacon floating around. <laughs> and then you chew those and swallow those and take a sip of this, and it's just like, an explosion of salty, savory, is it salty, savory citrus? It honestly, so like with the, with the citrus and the, the, the notes in this wine, like when we, when I paired it with the fish and the spice, it made me think of like a, almost like a Caribbean kind of dish. Yeah, yeah, same, so, same. You know, you like you like you're eating a spicy seafood and pairing it with some sort of like Caribbean pineapple or lime. Right, I was gonna say there's a the, like, kind I of thing. You know, in the Caribbean, there's just pineapple juice flying everywhere all the time. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, I I feel the same way with the coleslaw, but I I think it's the bacon that's bringing that out. Like yeah. like you're eating like a hunk of pork with pineapple and those Caribbean yeah, flavors. Yeah, dude. Yeah, that's that's how I feel with the that is exciting. With that as well. This is one of my favorite flavor combinations we've come across since we started shooting these. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna have to find out where I can get more root sand wine. Heck yeah. I'll tell you where you can get some more uh, bacon ranch coleslaw. My little lady right <laughs> over here. Hey everybody, thanks for joining. Be sure to click like and subscribe. And if you All those think, things. And if you can think of any good redneck foods you wanna see paired, Put them in the comments below. Heck yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello. Forgot to, forgot to bring in the snake head. <laughs>